Have you just bought an Amiga 500 or 500 plus? Or maybe you have one stored away up in the loft and you want to use it again. With budget so tight, what is the simplest, cheapest way to get back into using an Amiga 500? This all depends on where you currently are. If you've just got it down from the loft and you have a box of discs, controller and an Amiga monitor, then you're in a really good position. If you've just purchased the Amiga 500, you might just have the machine itself or maybe one or two discs, power supply and a mouse. So first I'm going to look at the video signal itself. Connecting a modern display to an Amiga is quite a bit of a challenge in itself. There are a few options. There's SCART to HDMI converters. Now these are relatively cheap and you need an RGB to SCART cable as well in the process. And this allows you to connect it up to a HDMI TV or a monitor you have already but the image quality is the worst out of these options. Next, there's the old CRT TV. If you've still got an old CRT TV with SCART, then this will work fine, and it's originally what it was intended for, but these are becoming more and more rare as time goes on, so it might not be an option for you where you are, plus they too take up a lot of space. Next is the option of 15 kilohertz LCD monitors. Now again, these are starting to become rare and not as easy to identify if they are actually 15 kilohertz compatible. This produces a nice picture, but it is another screen if you've already planned on using an existing monitor that you've got already. If you have the patience, you can find a bargain. Remember you need separate speakers to get the sound with this option. So finally, the RGB to HDMI. This is the best solution for picture quality so far, as it's a board that you put on your Amiga and use a Raspberry Pi Zero to get a clean HDMI signal out. It's relatively cheap, but you need a Pi Zero, which are difficult to get a hold of at the moment, and you require to open up the Amiga and relocate one of the chips. Again, you need separate speakers for the sound, so this only transmits picture. Now for the discs. Even if you have a massive box of discs, or just one or two discs, I recommend getting a GoTech drive. This opens up the ability to get games on ADF files and copy them to memory stick and then play them on the Amiga. It replaces the floppy drive and in its simplest form it does require opening up the Amiga but shops like Retro Passion sell some easy slot in solutions for you. If you still want to keep the real floppy drive because you have a large disc collection maybe that you still want to use then I recommend a GoTek external version and for the A500 or the A500 Plus you need a DFO switcher so that you can switch the internal and the external to be DF0. Now I'll briefly mention power supplies. If you're experiencing strange crashes or behaviors, power supply could be an area to look at and maybe replace. You can upgrade your own like I did in the video that I'm just linking now or buy a new redesigned one. And one more important thing for A500 Plus owners specifically, please, please check the inside of your Amiga to see if the clock factory has been removed. And if not, remove it or get somebody else to do it for you. This one component is known to leak and destroy so many A500 Plus boards. And then that's all you need. Now, you'll hear about accelerator boards, vampire boards, hard drives, WHD load. These all cost a lot more and is the next step that you can take, but you don't have to make that step. A lot of those things make it more convenient and faster, but if you just want to load up the old Amiga that you've got from the loft, or you're just starting out afresh with the system, the things that I've mentioned in this video 
are the key important steps to get you up and running. 